I want to say this is all just a hype and it's all a reality. We were giving everything to them and they were not giving us anything what we need. And I think that is why Web2 sucks. So just want to take you into the Web3 verse, but I want to start with what happened to the internet, right? We all know that we are here to speak about Web3 and how it is decentralizing the internet. But actually, you know the fact that the Web1 or the internet before that was OG internet itself is decentralized. So back in days in 1970s, we had this thing called Cold War. During that time, the US wanted to control their missiles and they, they wanted to control their nuclear weapons and they had only one system to control it. And they know that the fact that it can be hacked by anyone in the, in the country. I mean, it's a very risky thing for them to control everything in one single system. So they found out that there is an option to connect the computers decentrally. So the web one or before the web one, the internet was itself, the pioneers of internet was itself decentralized. I think you have heard about this story that in 2021 February, WhatsApp announced their uh, update to their privacy policy that it is like a take it or leave it. Either you use it or you can leave. Because their only aim is to extract more data from you to harvest more data that can lead them to generate more money. And I think millions of people in this group itself, I, I'm pretty sure that we were, we were planning to, you know, dump the uh, WhatsApp kind of platforms. And we were trying to shift to other private softwares like telegrams and signals and all. When you look at that particular industry, that economy grew only because of your data. Your data because you're, you are putting all your emails, your contact, your name, you're exposing yourself. And they were making millions and billions and trillions of money from it. So your data becomes their market cap. They were growing because of you. You were giving all the data to them. And I think that is why Web2 sucks. That is why Web2 sucks. I'm pretty sure everyone in this audience agreed to that point. Because we were giving everything to them and they were not giving us anything, what we need. And I want to talk to you about, you know, very interesting story of deplatforming because it's a very interesting story. I'm pretty sure that you all know that because internet is owned by a particular group of companies or big techs in the market. So recently you've heard about this story that Donald Trump had 88.7 million Twitter followers and he was banned completely from Twitter. And he, he was moved to another software called Parler. And lately, you know what happened? Amazon, they took the entire server from their server host. Even before that, Apple and Android took the entire application from the Apple Store. Think about this. Whatever you post on internet today, whatever you share on internet today, whatever voice note you send to your girlfriend or boyfriend, it's not yours. You're, you're owning nothing. Because you have only one option. Either you pay by their rules or you don't play at all. And before I jump into the whole Web3, you know, revolution, I want to tell you something, a basic fundamental about human, you know, social organization that is called trust. In the back in days, if you want to stay safe, I think trust is a very important factor. If I don't know you, I don't do business with you. I talk to people who I know, like my family or friends. In the pioneers of internet, they were trying to, you know, overlook this particular factor called trust. They wanted to eliminate the factor called trust because the trust term itself shows that there is a possibilities of fraud. Am I right? So if I know you, I do business with you. If I don't know you, I don't do business with you. So they came up with a solution that is institutions. Lately it was offline institution. Now it is online institution. Now it's all together online and offline institutions. Like the offline institutions like banks and all, offline institutions like Facebook and Microsoft and of course Uber, Ole, Flickr, everything is there. Because you both may be strangers, but you can come under one umbrella called institutions and they were looting everything from you. That's what happened. Because these big techs in the market, they control your data, they control your money. Do you really think that the money you invested in your banks are yours? No, it's not yours. It's theirs. They can control, they can stop it, they can ban any time they want. So these big companies were controlling the entire data. And Uber-like platforms are controlling the drivers because as you can see in the slide is that a stranger driver is connected to the stranger rider. That's what is happening in the society right now, right? You are not worried about talking to any stranger anymore because you think that you are safe but not. You are not safe in the web 2. And I don't want to complain the whole thing about web 1, web 2 and web 3. I don't want to complain about Mark Zuckerberg or Google or it's disrupting the entire world's economy or no, I don't want to talk about that. But still it's a bad sign. That is why we have to go back to the early days where everything was open source, where everything was decentralized, it was free for everyone because web 1 was like that, right? But in order for me to talk about web 3, I should tell you what the core fundamental analysis under the web 3 that is blockchain, smart contracts and of course you all know crypto 
digital assets and NFTs and things like that. I just want to clear this thing with you guys that is blockchain or math is much greater than humans. Because when you look at blockchain, I will tell you what blockchain is actually is. It's a decentralized digital list or ledger of who holds what. That is, it can be your money or it can be your picture, or it can be your tweet. It can be anything related to you that you have value to, right? And it is decentralized because all the users in the network have a copy of their own data in their ledger. And these ledgers or these, uh, you know, blocks are very secure because it is impossibly secured by a technology called cryptography. So cryptography is a mathematical problem. It has to encode and decode and it needs a lot of computing power. And that cryptography generate cryptocurrency to, uh, you know, give or take that computing power to the miners. So it's all the common story. You all know that what happened after blockchain in 2009, Satoshi Nakamoto or an anonymity group called Satoshi Nakamoto, they came up with this idea that you can actually send money through blockchain. It's called Bitcoin, the OG of blockchain or I, or I call it the crypto daddy. So what happened to blockchain? What was blockchain doing? It was actually helping us to transfer money from one place to another place without any border, without any banks, without any central authorities or agendas. It was giving us the power to send money to anywhere in the world. So this is what is happening in every blockchain network. If I send you a Bitcoin, the blockchain will note down that I send one Bitcoin and one Bitcoin is gone from my wallet. And the one Bitcoin is going to reach out to the next individual's wallet, right? And the same the same message is not down or copied into or distributed into the and other ledgers and the people who are encoding and decoding using the cryptography they are using a lot of computing power they have to pay for their system they have to pay for their power they have to pay for their electricity and all so they were getting something in reward that is bitcoin that is that is what bitcoin's original thing was and lately what happened after you know people exploring the web3 and uh, the possibilities of blockchain they know that there is something beyond bitcoin not just transferring money from one place to another place there is something beyond bitcoin that's what happened and vitalik Buterin came up with this idea called ethereum where everybody can come on board and they can develop the app on Ethereum blockchain. So if you look at the slide, the users are coming to the platforms like Twitter, LinkedIn or Facebook or so. And they are actually built on the layers of Amazon servers or cloud servers like that. So your datas are actually in their servers. When you look at the Ethereum blockchain, it's all developed on Ethereum blockchain. Blockchain is itself secure and unhackable, unchangeable. So your datas are going to be yours only, not going to be theirs. So I think I'm pretty sure that you have heard about the story that Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, sold his tweet for millions of dollars because he is the owner of that particular tweet. So every data you put on Web3 right now has a value and you can decide what value it should give. So in Web2, you're logging to Facebook with your credentials. In Web3, you're logging to Web3 with your wallet address. So what is happening here? Your identity, your name, your number, your emails, everything is secure because you're connecting it through your wallets. And there are other elements of uh, crypto or blockchain or Web3 that is DeFi. It is, you know, debanking the bank, I would say. There are options for you guys to sell your cryptos, buy your cryptos. You don't need to go to any banks. You can send it to anywhere across the world. There are platforms like Uniswap. You can swap any tokens you would like. DAOs, these are very beautiful technology out there run by smart contracts. Every centralized contracts in the, in the system right now are, are corrupted, I would say. But the DAOs give the power to the people, gives you the power to vote for the system. So nowadays, the business is business. But after DAOs and everything comes to existence, of course, when they have the polarity for sure the business will run by communities and the communities will guide the business so i think you all know that uh, the crypto or nfts or web3 or blockchain it's all converge into a term called metaverse i would never say facebook alone or the meta alone is controlling the metaverse even the metaverse is actually a decentralized platform plus it is an open source anyone in the world can do anything they like if they have the creative mindset so before i wind up i want to tell you one more thing that you know, you don't limit yourself to just D apps or decentralized platforms or D Twitter or, you know, there will be a decentralized version of Facebook or Instagram or something like that. There is, you know, something beyond Web3. There is something beyond D apps and cryptos. These are just a small elements of what Web3 is. And uh, I want to say before I wind up something that this is all just a hype and it's all a reality. So what are you see in the market? It's all just a hype. And it will burst out at some point and you will see the reality later on. But I think as a pioneer in the space, you guys are pioneers in the space looking at right now a blue ocean of opportunities. Thank you. Thank you so much.